welcome to Raw TV. I'm your host, Gabrielle Dorisami. Now, it's a given. Our lives are packed with emotional ups, downs, sometimes sideways. And you know what? Sometimes it feels like you've actually stopped and broken down on the roller coaster of life. And you know what? Not every day can be the best day ever. But that's life, and that's okay. We get through it by remaining inspired and motivated to persevere through the hard times and enjoy the great ones. Today, we have some very special guests for you, and we'll be talking about exactly that. Inspiration, motivation, and how we can practice simple things every day to improve our overall quality of life. But first, we want to know what inspires you. Here's Brittany Duffy with Word on the Street. <laughs> Thank you, Gabrielle. We are once again back at Southeastern University where students work hard each day to achieve their dreams. Let's go see what students around campus use for their inspiration. My friends and my family inspire me, making them proud, being the best person I can be. I think I'm inspired by the life that I've been given. Um, it's definitely a blessing from God. So when I am surrounded by my friends, I'm inspired by their creativity and the things that they're learning. But I'm also inspired by things that God's revealed personally in my heart. Um, and I just want to steward that. What inspires me is a good CD, some good food, a good chat with guys like John Lorenzo hanging out with my friends. I'd have to say people inspire me every day. People do new stuff and I'm able to see and grow and really learn from other people. Honestly, looking at the people around me and looking at their lives and seeing how they have such wonderful callings and they have such amazing stories, um, I'm inspired by them to figure out what my own calling is and what my story is gonna be. Even though the source of inspiration differs from each person, the important thing is everyone is inspired. What inspires you? Thank you, Brittany. Well, we are joined by our first guest, Mr. Al Forrest. Thank you for coming on the show. Oh, it's good to be here. And of course, we have our lovely panelists, Lydia, Austin, and Gabrielle. <laughs> They're kind of yeah. double, as usual. <laughs> so, Mr. Forrest, you are the District Youth Director for the Penn Florida District of Assemblies of God. That's quite the title. That is true. And you brought several people with you, right? You guys here? I pay them to come. No, you I don't. <laughs> so you're actually a Southeastern University alumni, right? Yes, I was. So you didn't stray. I mean, you're in the area now, and where were you originally I actually from? left. I grew up in Ormond and, and basically went from Southeastern to Jacksonville to Ormond, back to Southeastern, back to Lakeland. So this is home base now for you? It is. We live here. And so tell us a little bit about yourself. Myself as an individual or myself what I do? Uh, yourself as an individual. So you as an individual, here. I am married and I love my wife and she is over there in the audience and I have two <laughs> teenage sons that love Jesus and we just love life. That's awesome. So how did you come to be the district youth director? for? It, it's an interesting story. I was youth pastoring for almost 20 years and then the district superintendent, it's like the bishop of the Assemblies of God, asked me would I consider doing it and had to go through all these... What was your reaction? I was like, okay, I guess so, you know. And, and <laughs> it's a big it was decision. A, it was a God thing because God moved us from one place to another place. It mm -hmm. was a transitional moment in our life and we knew that this is what we were made to do, so we really love what we get to do. Wow, that's awesome. I wish awesome. I could handle handle those big decisions like yeah okay <laughs> I know. Sounds good. I'll take it on yeah. yeah so you what inspires you we're talking about inspiration so like what you you wake up in the morning and you have such a big job what inspired you to work with youth in such a dramatic way I think what inspires me is the fact that I got saved when I was in my my young adult years I was 20 years old gave my life to Christ came out of a really rough background but I had an encounter with God and when I had an encounter with God what what inspires me is I want that encounter to be fresh every day. So I read the Bible, I pray, um, I life journal, I sew, yeah. I do all those wonderful <laughs> things. Life journal. Life journal. Yeah. So, um, and, and I didn't learn that at SEU, but I learned that in my, my master's degree here at SEU, mm. wow. that um, it was important to do that. And once I learned that, I realized, okay, this is a really good way to hear God's voice. I enjoy doing it every single day. I do it, my wife does it, it sounds funny, but my sons do it. We've taught students in our state how to soap. It's a, it's a cool thing. But for me, inspiration ties all the way back to relationship with Christ. The Bible says in, in um, 1 Corinthians that, that um, 
Yet to all, it, what does it say? Oh, <laughs> this is this all is, the time. This, this is why is I get you? a scripture tattooed on my arm. <laughs> the whole hey. Bible. <laughs> she has it on her arm. Okay. Yeah, it, it basically says that God has prepared a wonderful plan for those who love Him. Mm -hmm. And your eyes never seen it. Your heart and your and your mind can't comp comprehend it, or ears have ever heard of it. And when I look at that, it says God's prepared it. If He's mm -hmm. got something prepared for me. I'm the type of person that I want it. Yeah. Yeah. So I wake yeah. up in the morning and there's a lot we of things we want in life. So inspiration is God's got something prepared for me. And, and it may not be what I expect, like being the district youth director, but he prepared it for me. So I'm going to jump all in and go after it. So you almost look at like challenges as an inspiration. I love a good challenge. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I'm challenged by, by events that we do, by everything that we do. And, and to me, life is a challenge, but looking at situations that, that need greater leadership or greater situations that, to help that situation, to me, that's, that's exciting. Yeah. So why do you think people in general are inspired? Like, why even give it a second thought? I think if you, well, with that question, <laughs> there's a lot of people that aren't inspired. And, and I, think, I think people that aren't inspired are trying to look at people that are inspired to figure out, okay, what really inspires them? Mm -hmm. But they don't realize that it's Christ mm -hmm. in us that's the inspiration to wake up. And if I didn't have Christ in my life right now, and wake up and know that the, the creator of the universe lives inside of me in the morning. When I wake up in the morning, I say, hey, I can handle anything. <laughs> My inspiration is he will not leave me. Wow. So yeah. I can wake up. People that aren't inspired, I just think they need a, a real dose of an encounter with Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Absolutely. It's like it's a good drive every morning when you wake up and yeah. it's like, I don't want to get out of bed, but yeah. hey, there's a scripture telling, what is it? Wake up, you lazy how does that one go? Wake up out of your slumber. Yeah. It's a different perspective we have as Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, we see things differently and we have that inspiration. Because inspiration yeah. can be yeah. so many, so mm -hmm. many things. So this yeah. is a very specific way of looking at it and I, I love it. But were there times in your life where maybe you felt uninspired? And if so, like, where do you go from there? I think if you if you find times in your life where you're uninspired, a lot of times it's when you are you feel like you're in a rut. You keep doing the same thing over and over. And when we go through a rhythm oh, yeah. in life, life can become boring because mm -hmm. we put ourselves in a boring rhythm. Mm -hmm. But if we move out of that rhythm and do things in a different way, I found myself during transitional times praying in different places, doing different things so that I could encounter God in different ways. Some people read the Bible the same way. They read the same version of the Bible. They, they do the same devotion over and over. You really got to change it up. You have to shift gears and realize that when you put yourself in a, in a, in a strict rhythm, that sometimes you got to break the rhythm so that you're not receiving just the same mm -hmm. thing. If you want something new, you have to do new things. Mm -hmm. If you want to experience different levels of, of a building, you got to climb to the roof mm -hmm. of the building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't want to stay commonplace. You know? And that's kind of what you were saying too with the different opportunities that God puts in front of you is you don't really know what's going to come your way. You don't really know when you're going to find a yeah. new reading or praying spot that you're going to love or a job opportunity. It's kind of that discovery keeps the inspiration. That's mm -hmm. where Keep faith comes in. Faith is what the absence of things we don't see, mm -hmm. but the evidence of things we hope for. Hope for. So by yeah. faith, I realize God's got a plan. It may not be what I want to see. As a human being, my perception <laughs> is I want to see true. it. Very often. But he has yeah. a plan, so I have different. to submit to him and understand that his plan is the best plan. And it's hard talking mm -hmm. about inspiration yes. sometimes because it's like, it's like the cloud, you know, the apple cloud, like where is it? You can't see it, you know? <laughs> um, so how do you take motivation and then just really quickly turn it into action? Because without action, what's the point of being inspired? Yeah. Like, um, what motivates me is, is every single day I've got students and leaders around the state that I can connect with and sow myself back into them. My legacy in my life, the way I look mm -hmm. at it, is if I give myself away, if I give myself to people around me and elevate those around me, that motivates me to do what God's done inside my mm -hmm. life. So you take the inspiration, turn it into motivation, <laughs> and then you turn it into action. So Absolutely. You there you go. That is quite, yeah. If you're just inspired, just for ins inspiration's sake, then, then that's weak. If you're inspired yeah. and, you don't, and you do something about it, you, need you get moving uh -huh. yeah. forward. Yeah. Imagine if like Picasso had never painted or Walt Disney had never made exactly. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> and shared it. I know, it's crazy. It's definitely something to think about and we're jumping into motivation already and motivation is so important. Sometimes we don't even feel motivated to get up out of bed, forget about changing the world. So Brittany Duffy has a few tips for us on how we can stay motivated daily. As college students, let alone average people, we tend to get those days where all we want to do is absolutely nothing. I'm asking students what they do when they're lacking motivation. When I'm lacking motivation, I download a new CD. 
on iTunes and I listen to it. I think I set goals for myself and understand that to be a successful person, uh, you got to have goals and you got to achieve them. I'm pretty self-disciplined, so I have things set aside to know when um, I'm following them and when I'm not. And so when I'm not, I'll have my friends who are closer to me be like, hey, I need some encouragement. Can you help me stay motivated? So they'll kind of keep me accountable. Um, I'll do that. But also just having kind of like a rule of life or something written out where I know, okay, am I following this or am I not? Because I can kind of feel it internally. Um, so when I'm not, I surround myself with people who can help me and encourage me to get back on track. When I'm lacking motivation, I go to people, I talk and I see how I can learn and what they're doing in their lives that, that makes them grow. Um, I go over and I journal or I kind of just find a place where I can settle myself and just be and find motivation from God. Honestly, I imagine how bad I'll feel if I fail or if I don't succeed and that kind of motivates me to <laughs> step forward and do whatever it is. Fear of failure, I guess, motivates me. Each person is motivated by different things. That's why it's important to find that thing and let it motivate you. Where does your motivation come from? Thank you, Brittany. I'm feeling much more motivated already. We are now joined by Southeastern University's men's basketball coach, RJ Barsh. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. So we want to know a little bit about you off the court. Tell us about yourself. I have a 17-year-old son, Carson. My wife, Chris, she's an ER nurse in Winter Haven. Wow. Uh, small family, but we love, we, love the, we love God. We love to serve. And my family... My, it's crazy because I'm a basketball coach, but when I go home, there's really no sports going on in my house. <laughs> and so it's really a good a balance for me to have. So most basketball coaches, it's 24-7. Coaching. That's just like me, except there's no sports going on anywhere. <laughs> it's the same thing. So it's cool to go home and be with my family and not be about sports mm -hmm. and just sit down and just kind of be normal for a little bit because outside of that door, it's all basketball. <laughs> so there was no March Madness going on at home? Well, you Is know, that what you're trying to... <laughs> there was March Madness and some March Sadness. My team didn't win. Uh, I was pulling for Kentucky, so uh, but we definitely no. had... <laughs> that week, it's all about basketball. So th th that's But it. apart from that... Well, very cool. So we know a big part of being a coach for any team, really, is keeping the team motivated throughout the season. How do you go about doing that? I mean, there's so many ways to motivate somebody, but the best way is to first get to know the individual and what their goals are. And then as a coach, it's my job to shape those goals and then to give them little ways to make sure they're attaining those goals. Mm -hmm. And so we constantly are reinforcing the values of our program. Mm -hmm. The first thing I did at Southeastern was change the interior of our locker room. They wanted to be champions. They wanted to play at a high level. But when you walked in our locker room, you didn't Probably see those things. smelled pretty bad. <laughs> no, we, we had some potpourri in there. <laughs> That's where my wife comes into play. Yeah. And so what we did is we put some language around the locker room. So cool. consistently they're seeing the word champion. They're oh. seeing the word, uh, you know, strive for excellence, you know, play at a higher level. And when you are constantly seeing those things, I think that's what motivates you when those days are mm -hmm. tough. When you got to yeah. practice after four days' You can look classes. up and see the poster, and mm -hmm. it's like right there. And yeah, exactly. You can see yeah. That, so. I have scripture all over my room. Yeah. No, it's important to do those. It reminds you why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you've seen a difference? Like, I mean, yeah. I, it would definitely inspire me and motivate me if I saw these all the time, but you've seen a difference with the morale of the team. No, it's, it's, the cool thing about coaching is you're judged by wins and losses. Mm. And so my first year, we were 15 and 17, and we struggled a little bit, but we were defining our culture. Once we changed the locker room, we changed how we approached the game. We made it more about who we are as a person off the court, our disciplines with Christ, how we walked, our long-term goals. I mean, the second year, we're 27-7, and seven, and we lose in the final four. Mm -hmm. And so it's evident that those things work because what happens is when the young man comes into practice tired, and he sees those things that motivates, and then he goes out and he's with 15 other guys striving for another goal, they're excited. When they leave, they're also inspired again because they're seeing those same words as they go home mm -hmm. after practice. It's very important to pick the best words possible. It's definitely, definitely, yeah. <laughs> so how do you translate that short-term motivation that you have during practice and keep it throughout like the day and more mm -hmm. long-term motivation? Yeah. You know, what I like to do is, is uh, imagery. And so I like to m make my guys visualize. And so we sometimes we'll sit down and I'll say, I want you to see yourself playing right now in the national championship game. Wow. wow. And so when you're doing that, it puts you in that sphere. It it's puts like a you in level, that right? it puts mm -hmm. you in yeah. that in that zone. And so sometimes what we'll do is before practice, we'll watch the end of a championship game. 
And so if you can't practice hard after that, you shouldn't be playing. That's true. And so one way to keep those, those big goals going when it gets tough is to always be reminded of why you're playing. I think people don't get burned out because of what they're doing. People get burned out because they forget why they're doing it. Amen. And so my job as a yeah. coach is to always put those little things out there to remind them, you're playing this game of basketball because of your discipline, your integrity, you want a college degree, you want to graduate. So all those things come into play. So what, um, Coach Barsh, how do you motivate yourself individually? What motivates you as a person outside of basketball? Or it could have to do with, you know, it could pertain De to basketball. Definitely outside of basketball. I mean, I came from a low-income family, um, seven boys in a house. <laughs> And so for Were me, they all wow. as tall as you? They're all as tall as wow. me. Yeah. And so for me, what motivates me is I have a son who has my last name. And I want to make sure that I make life better for him yeah. than it was for me. And that he can do the same thing for his kids. Mm -hmm. And so for me, when I get home every single day, I'm reminded why I can work 23 hours and it not be a problem. Because I see yeah. my son when I get home. They are the words... You know, his, no, exactly. His exactly. name is, in a sense, the words that you're thinking yeah. of. You very put motivated. that together very well. Thank you. That's why we go to college. Yeah. <laughs> Communication majors. There you go. So how do you stay genuine? Because I can imagine you're probably having off days, too, and you're mm -hmm. in front of, of these athletes. How do you make it genuine? But you have to be authentic. You know, when, when times are tough, sometimes you have to recognize that. Yeah. And my job as a coach is not to paint a false reality. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes what I have to do is let them know, hey, fellas, we're struggling. And another good thing about sports is you have percentages. And so if you're playing bad, it will show in those percentages. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so you're able to go to those things. And you're able to yeah. isolate certain skill sets and get better. But, you know, what other things you can do is to always, at the end of everything that you do, realize it's not about you. Mm -hmm. One of our core values is to get over yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and, and make, make it about Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then when you make it about Jesus Christ and you're humble and everything and humility is in your character, you can't lose. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. What's I'm noticing from your answers and then from Mr. Alforce's answers, it's about perspective too, yes. right? So a lot of this is kind of putting the right perspective on and realize like on the field, or not on the field, I know a lot about <laughs> sports. On the, on the court, court. court, yeah. No, <laughs> this is all about what you're doing right here, right now, but mm -hmm. that's not always mm -hmm. the case. So really quickly, how do you make your motivation last? Because I will be like, you know, getting real hyped up about mm -hmm. something and then... You have the inspiration, but keeping the motivation. Exactly. I think God gifts, gifts everybody in a certain way. Mm. And that's my gift. That's my skill set. That's what God's blessed me with. I think if you're not that way, you better surround yourself around people that are. Mm -hmm. So I really think it's about your environment and about your five best friends. That is so neat. Well, thank you again for coming on the show, giving us some good perspective, giving me a little knowledge in basketball, <laughs> <laughs> not paid on a field. So no matter how hard we may try to be motivated, it definitely comes easier maybe to some more than others, especially when you're trying to remind yourself to have a good day and get good perspective. Well, Brittany Duffy has a very special uh, episode of Word on the Street where she finds someone who took it upon themselves to make sure everybody has the best day ever. <laughs> For this segment of Word on the Street, we want to highlight a student here at Southeastern who inspires and motivates everyone on campus. Here's Nick Matrone with a story of encouragement. In high school, uh, I only had one friend, basically. Like, I have a lot of acquaintances. I slapped hands to a lot of people, like, ha, ah, high five. And, uh, but they weren't really my friends or anything, so it was really sad. I first met God in summer of, of, of freshman year. And at a youth camp, and it was like a, a really great experience and stuff. And then, like sophomore year, I started falling more in love with him. I was like read the Bible a lot more just to understand who he is. My journey to Southeastern, it, uh, it was it was weird. <laughs> it started off when uh, I was going to school with my mom, so she drove me to school every day. And during the car ride, we would listen to Joy FM every morning. And then uh, Southeastern came on, like come to Southeastern, you know the whole like radio thing that they have. And then I was like, you should go there because my mom really wanted me to go to college. When I first got here, I went to preview days and I saw for King and Country. And there's one person that I met that really stuck out to me and that really made me want to come here. And that was Dylan Renfro. Um, we had like, after the for King and Country concert, we went upstairs to Addison and we just had like a great testimony time. And then we worshiped together and prayed together. And we just had a great, beautiful time. And like some people were singing. And I was like, wow, his voice is so good. And I'm like, these people are so great and loving. And I really want to be a part of this family and what God's doing here. 
And so I came here, and I was like, I really like it. But when I see someone, and that, that makes me have the best day ever, because at home, like, during Christmas break and summer break, like, I get really lonely and stuff. So when I see people, like, I try to embrace it. I just, I just love being human with people, and I love hugging people, because, like, normally I hug, because sometimes, all the time, I need a hug. I smile at people, because I need a smile. Like, we, like, live off of each other, and that's how we keep each other going, because we're in this life thing together, we're human together, we're people together. For this special edition for Word on the Street, Nick and I would like to thank you so much for joining us. Back, Back to, to you, you Gabrielle. Gabrielle. Thank you, Brittany. I'm so happy we got to do a special feature on him. He is very cool. I love seeing him around campus. Well, we are now joined by another special guest, Professor Steffi, who is a uh, professor here at Southeast University, and you teach marriage and family here. Yes. But you actually have a lot of hats. You do a lot. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, I was uh, raised in an Irish Catholic family. I was the sixth of eight children, and to say wow. that we were on the wrong side of the track would be very accurate. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure that if people had, well, when people looked at our family, they would have um, thought less of us. But uh, God came into my life at the age of 15, and um, ever since then, I just wanted to be in ministry to do whatever He had for me. So um, I went off to Bible college, and I got married, and then I got widowed. Well, no, then I had a baby, then I got widowed, and so um, Bible college took me six years to get four years of schooling, mm -hmm. but um, it was good. And then um, had some things happen, wound up going back home, making poor choices. So I have actually been married three times. I've been widowed, divorced, and tomorrow is 21 years with my husband. Wow. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. He's a battalion chief with the Lakeland Fire Department. Wow. So. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, we thank mm -hmm. him for our service here in the community. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what I love about your story is you've been, like you just mentioned very briefly, through mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And you you've lived have, a life. Yeah. Have. You've been long. A long time. <laughs> you've counseled and mm -hmm. you've pastored and now mm -hmm. you're teaching. How mm -hmm. have you felt that those experiences have kind of helped you impart knowledge on other people? Well, I know when I counsel, I always try to get people to think future questions. Like if they're having relationship issues, I'll say, well, what would you like your relationship to look like in three to five years? Mm -hmm. What would that look like? Or if it's a financial issue. So I rarely say always, but I feel like this is very appropriate for this point is always think of the end game. Mm -hmm. Young people today often don't realize, but you're going to die some point. Yeah. Yeah. And the end game that all of us will experience is um, death mm -hmm. and standing before our Heavenly Father. And so um, I, I always encourage people, no matter what they're going through, to become a person of integrity as they go through really it. really is the perspective again mm -hmm. here. So we've been talking about like inspiration and mm -hmm. motivation. And mm -hmm. what we really want to do and, and use your expertise mm -hmm. with as well is to learn some practical ways, like right. everyday actual steps. How do we carry it out mm -hmm. into the real yeah. world? Exactly. We know what to do and we know how to be inspired and motivated, but right. what can we do today? Yeah. Yeah. My first thing is to make goals. Uh, long-term goals and short-term goals that are going to get you where you need to be and that way uh, I'm a runner and I realize that when I'm on a very long run that I need to try to do the shortest distance as possible and when you have your goals and you keep them in front of you the chances of you taking detours are less mm. the next thing I would say is don't accept what other people say about you mm -hmm. you know when I was um, in college and a widowed single parent uh, we had a missionary come in for chapel and he just sobbed. He cried. He said, we need workers. People are dying without Jesus. Please come. And I was so stirred, wow. I signed up to go. And, uh, you know, at least go for the meeting. And when I got there, all he said to me was, you are a single parent. You can't come. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, I just cried. I had tears just rolling down my cheeks on my mm -hmm. way back to my mm -hmm. apartment. And I, I believed him. Mm -hmm. I thought, I'm a single parent. I can't minister. I can't do. Don't ever let mm -hmm. people define who you are mm -hmm. because God thinks outside of the box. Mm -hmm. You know, He is so creative. I don't know what it would have looked like for me to go, but he qualifies God, the unqualified. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, in those situations, 
you know, briefly, how did you find inspiration mm -hmm. and motivation? Because those sound like pretty trying times. Mm -hmm. And they were. <laughs> but I'll tell you, the mind is a powerful thing. And when Coach was talking about visualizing, it is so true. There was a Harvard professor who did a study on the mind. And what he did was he did neuroimaging while people practiced a five-finger um, little um, sequence and watch the um, the motor cortex of the brain be active and then he asked them just to practice in their brain and as they practiced in their brain without moving their fingers the same motor cortex lit mm. up and did the same activity mm. so visualizing absolutely does work and so when I was broken I got a hold of a book and it was called telling yourself the truth mm. and it changed my life I realized my mental tapes were very negative like mm. you're stupid you've ruined it mm. you know Know, you're a divorcee what can God ever do with you mm -hmm. just constant negativity and that book made me change it I actually had little lessons and I'd have to say I've made mistakes but God still loves me Absolutely. you know um, things really hurt right now but God has plans for good for me mm -hmm. and and I watched him I mean he just brought so much healing to my life and he um, you know, I started working at Victory Church here in Lakeland and started out as a part-time fill-in and wound up care pastor for five years. Wow. And Who would so, have wow. even imagined, yeah. you know, if you would have told <laughs> yourself? Me. And now you're working with college-aged people mm -hmm. and for marriage and family, and that is something that's happening a lot on this yes. campus, so that is a very... Ring by spring, <laughs> you <laughs> think, okay? Y'all are laughing, yes. but you guys are looking around. Now, what okay. do you do? Okay, so... My mother, she had three children at home. She was finishing up her degree. She was 40 years old and found out that she mm -hmm. was pregnant with me. Ooh, so wow. student loans, all this stuff piling up. Mm -hmm. um, so things can definitely be hard and she's you know, pushing past it. And obviously now she's in her 60s and she's doing well and she just got a new job and all this stuff. So obviously you can, it can be done. But for mm -hmm. people that are younger like us mm -hmm. who haven't really had like the, mm -hmm. um, Experience. The, experience the experience of yeah. overcoming, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we have the inspiration, we have the motivation, but things aren't going right. We aren't getting accepted to the schools, we aren't getting the jobs. We're a year mm -hmm. out from yeah. <laughs> after we've graduated. Like, what would you say? First of all, I would say trust God because he has a plan. He has a purpose and it's not always what we want. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the key yeah. that I feel like keeps coming up. Mm -hmm. He knows what yeah. he's doing, right? Mm -hmm. in yeah, the long run. absolutely. And that's where faith comes in to believe that he knows what he's doing. And as long as you are where you need to be, it'll work out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we love that you're here on campus. A lot of people love and you I as do too. a Thank professor. You. Yeah, I just want to congratulate you on everything. And I'm just so happy that you're able to mentor the students here and the people that you've touched in the community as well. So we thank you for weighing in on mm -hmm. this. And we'll definitely be able to take some of these practices and put them into action. I'll put some words up on my mirror myself. I'm not, I'm not sure what words yet. Yeah. Yeah. Happy, happy 21st anniversary. anniversary. Thank you Congratulations. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this show. We've definitely had a blast recording it. Make sure that you keep up with us on our social media to find out about upcoming shows or events. And always remember, guys, to live it raw. Mm -hmm.